fishermen out before dawn, plying their trade in the Gulf of Gabez. The bay on Tunisia's east coast is around 100 kilometers long. In recent times, the fishermen have had to stray ever further from the coast to catch fish. I've been a fisherman for 38 years. A lot has changed in that time. 20 years ago, we used to catch loads of prawns. But in recent years, there have been repeated events that have reduced our catch. The latest problem was the blue crab. They wiped out everything. The first blue crabs were spotted here at the end of 2014. It's a species that was previously unknown in Tunisia. Their numbers increased rapidly, and within eight months, the crabs had become a real menace. They would cut the fishing nets, eat the fish, and devour anything else they could find. They became such a problem that the fishermen nicknamed them Daesh, after the notorious militant group Islamic State. The blue crab is native to the Indo-Pacific region. They came here via the Red Sea and the Suez Canal, like most of the roughly 1,000 non-native species that have reached the Mediterranean. Because of climate change, the waters here are now also warm enough to support tropical species. Mohamed Nejmedin Bradai has spent decades studying the migratory patterns in the Mediterranean. We're especially interested in learning about invasive species because they threaten the biodiversity of all our seas. And it's a phenomenon that we're seeing increasingly in the Mediterranean. Scientists estimate that a new non-native species appears roughly every nine days. That's significant. At Tunisia's National Institute of Marine Sciences and Technology, Alfa Ben Abdallah and her team are studying the blue crabs. The scientists are keen to learn more about this destructive species. How fast do the crabs grow? How quickly do they reproduce? And how do they impact other species when they arrive in a new area? To help answer these questions, they're analyzing the contents of the crab's stomachs. The blue crab is an extremely voracious species. The crabs are basically insatiable. They'll feed on all kinds of prey. They'll eat prawns, for example, but they'll also eat cephalopods like squid. And they prey on the fish that live in the Gulf of Gabès and are important for the fishing industry. But the blue crab could also pose a threat to another, much larger marine animal, the sea turtle. The Mediterranean is home to three species of turtle, all of which are endangered. They gather in the Gulf of Gabez to feed and to spend the winter. To the north, Kuriat Island is an important nesting ground for the loggerhead turtle, which lays its eggs at just a few sites on the island. Throughout the entire Mediterranean, the number of nesting places has dropped rapidly, with the animals being disturbed by bright lights and tourists. When they first hatch, the babies weigh just 20 grams. Without a hard outer shell, they are completely defenseless. Only one in a thousand survives. Many get eaten by fish and crabs. And now, of course, there's a new predator in town, the blue crab. Just a few kilometers away on the mainland, Hatem is currently being cared for. The adult female is more than 30 years old. She's malnourished and has a large fishing hook inside her, a fate suffered by many sea turtles. The scientists here say injuries from boat propellers are also common. They found these pieces of plastic in Hatem's feces. The pollution of the seas is another huge threat to the turtles. Around two-thirds of the animals examined here have plastic inside their bodies. The scientists record and keep everything they find. 
Sea turtles are very important for the marine ecosystem. They maintain the balance in the food chain. The loggerhead turtle, for example, eats everything. It will eat crabs and mollusks, fish, jellyfish. It makes sure no individual species can take over. If things start to tip out of balance, the sea turtle helps to get things back into equilibrium. One of the biggest threats to the sea turtles is the fishing industry. Baja landed in a fishing net as bycatch. Once the juvenile turtle has recovered and is able to dive for food again by herself, she'll be released back into the sea. But first, the scientists want to take blood and tissue samples to analyze her DNA. The data is needed for an international research project studying the effects of plastic pollution on sea turtles. Meanwhile, efforts are underway to curb the numbers of blue crab. A Tunisian company called Golden Fish is now making money from the invasive shellfish. Other companies along the Gulf of Gabez are doing the same. In other parts of the world, the blue crab is a delicacy. So they're now being caught, taken apart and frozen, ready for export. Last year alone, the company sent out 60 tons of crab and crab meat. Most of the customers are in Asia, but the blue crabs are also popular in Spain and Italy. In the capital Tunis, we visit another laboratory. This one focuses on developing aquatic bioproducts. The researchers here study marine organisms to identify natural substances that could be used in cosmetics and other applications. They found that the meat of the blue crab is rich in various proteins. By turning the crab meat into a powder, they've developed a protein-rich food supplement. So now, the blue crab has an appeal for the domestic market too. The blue crab all but destroyed the livelihoods of many fishermen. But now it's become a source of income, allowing the fishing industry to survive. And by catching and using the crabs, this invasive species is being kept under control off Tunisia's coast. <laughs> 